Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Let's do it. Um, Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Boobay. Hi. Hello and welcome to Boobays. Boobays, that's right. We're your hosts. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joshua. And today we're here to talk to you about a film. <laughs> a film. A science fiction horror film written and directed by Lee Wanell, which we are familiar with because we've covered other movies of him, including Saw. Um yes. plug. So go check out that episode and a few other movies as well. Like all the um, didn't we cover like all the saws? But basically, yeah, we did. And then there's uh we covered Insidious and we've covered Insidious chapter two and three. Um yeah, quite a few movies. Quite yeah. a few movies. And he he was only he only di- he only directed the first saw. So oh, but, okay. but he had a heavy hand in writing them, I believe. Yes. That's right. I remember yes. us talking he about that. that now. It yes. has been a hot second since we covered mm-hmm. Saw. So it feels like a yeah. lifetime ago. Oh, yeah, most certainly. Um, but yeah, we're diving into The Invisible Man. Um, you 2020. Know, 2020. A, um, Based on the 19- 1897, sorry, almost so a 19- old. novel by H.G. Wells um, of the same name, The Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. And I would be so curious to read this book because, like, I mean, H.G. Wells, like, he wrote The Time Machine and everything else, too. But he was War so, yeah, before his time. Yeah, like, he was. Uh, he did some amazing, amazing work. And this is a terrifying idea that he came up with. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I mean, <clears throat> the recesses of his mind brought out a really chilling um kind of you know imagine i mean getting stalked enough as it is is kind of one of the worst things and then like having it be invisible like that just adds a whole nother layer to that makes um, you feel like you're crazy yeah like a master class in gaslighting you know exactly Um, and it is also kind of rebooting the 1933 film of the same name so this has been kind of reiterated a few different times Um, 1933 yeah 1933 mm-hmm. wow yeah that long ago which like that makes sense because the book came out that long ago so of course they adapted it but it is uh basically essentially the seventh installment in a line of invisible man movies um which i didn't realize there were so many and yeah, yeah it stars elizabeth moss who we recognize from the handmaid's tales and a few other things uh and movies that i will tell you in two seconds like the west wing and Mad Men, and she was mm-hmm. in um girl interrupted i honestly didn't even know that i was on, that's great um yeah yeah oh huh, i wonder who she was in girl interrupted we'll have to anyway. watch it to find out yeah, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Um, have you ever watched it? No, I don't. I don't know if I have. I don't know. It's um, 
Am, Speaking of which, we were unsure if I'd ever watched this movie, and I've never watched this movie. <laughs> okay, yeah, makes sense. Oh, and uh, Girl Interrupted might be triggering. Um, um, yeah, same so. reason I've never watched Handmaid's Tale, because it's uh, yeah. too triggering for me as well. The subject matter. And, um, um, but yeah. this film also stars Oliver Jackson Cohen, who is from The Haunting of Hill House. Mm-hmm. Um, he played a ghosty like character in that too. Yep. Um, well, no, he was alive. It was the bent neck <laughs> lady was who was. Oh, he was dead. At the at a certain did, he died at the end, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. I yeah, I, I think he did. He it's been so long. I watched it now when it first came out, and so it's because they were so twins. Long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Him and him and the bent net lady. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I might be wrong on that. But yes, he was We've in that. So Storm Jason. Reed. Mm-hmm. Aldis Hodge. I'm assuming it's Aldis, not Aldis. Uh, I don't know because we have a store that is spelled that it's way. Called it's called Aldis. Aldis. I know. Yeah. It auto corrected it to Aldis. I think it's Aldis. like because it's spelled the same way, but it yeah. auto corrected it in my phone when I was typing my notes. Um, before we got too deep into this, I wanted to make our podcast slightly political, not political, but I just wanted to say that, um, this movie was incredibly triggering for me. I, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to get a little serious. I know we're not normally serious over here, (laughs) but, um, it so just trigger warning at the top if you've ever been in an abusive relationship this um which i have i was in an incredibly abusive relationship when i was in high school and he lived with us and basically controlled every ounce of like my being Mm -hmm. um and he stalked me afterwards Mm -hmm. um and then he continues to this day it's been 12 plus years now, 13 years. Um, he continues to this day to reach out to people asking about me and including my parents. Um, so this movie was rather unsettling. Um, mm-hmm. And then there was also, shit, I might cry. <laughs> um, this movie was a lot for me to watch right now. Um, Why are we about to talk about this? <laughs> I didn't know this is what it was about. Um oh, right. and it Jeez. it just um it there was a line in the movie where Emily the sister after the intense email was sent to her yeah that um she was like if you're not smart enough to see the good guys and you're too weak to get away from the bad guys it really because I never like actually got out of that relationship. Like he broke up with me Mm. um, because I stopped. It was a heavily like sexually abusive relationship as well. Um, And I stopped giving him what he wanted. I started like fighting back and he left me in the end. Mm. But I just don't want anyone. If you are in an abusive relationship to think that you're too weak to get away like that sentiment in the movie i know it was just like a small line but it really Mm -hmm. it really messed with me um and i just don't want anyone thinking that you know that you can't get out of it because you can and there it is so much better whenever you do unless they continue to come for you and then which that's really terrifying um yeah but I just don't want anyone to think and I looked up just the hotline for the domestic violence hotline. If in the event that anyone was listening, um, that number is 800-799-7233. And they also have a text service as well. If you are in an abusive relationship, this is, um, it's just something that hits pretty close to home for me. Even 13 years removed, it still obviously has, there's PTSD. Like, I remember thinking that I was seeing invisible 
people like coming into my room or doing these things to me. Like I would round corners and like freak out and PTSD Mm -hmm. is this felt like an embodiment of PTSD, but this was like a very real thing that was happening to uh, Cecilia in the movie. But um, yeah, it just, it just, it got me. It got me good. Yeah. But I wanted to zero, share that zero booze, zero zero booze. booze. No, I I did enjoy the movie, um, yeah. and I thought it was really clever, um, and it honestly it terrified me more than most other movies that I've seen. So, yeah. uh, because the very not that an invisible suit is real. I mean, it probably is in like some maybe one day. Or yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. But how do we know they're invisible? Exactly. Like they could be here all the time. And yeah. that person who was in my life is not smart enough to get an invisible suit. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I worry like I even worry because he's tried to reach out to like this podcast before and stuff too and so i even worry like that he listens to this even to this day oh just to listen well hey if you are listening there, fuck you <laughs> fuck you and take a hint and look at all the trauma you cause, my friend yeah. so um i have boogers coming out my nose now take with that what you will i'm sorry you had to go through that my friend it's um, okay yeah I mean, well, it's not okay. It's not okay, but, but it happens. We and all grow. Unfortunately, and learn. happens to what? Well, and unfortunately, it happens to a lot more people. Um, and maybe some people are listening right now that are going through that, or know other people who go through that. So, exactly. That's things. why I wanted to bring it up. They're not alone. And you're right. Um, what the sister said, she probably said because she was in a state of hurt. But um, yeah, I mean, was, it was a really awful email that was sent to her. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pretty. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that was a long ass email too. Just it basically was. berating her, but um, yeah, like you, like just touching on that, those words are pretty insensitive because um, everybody's story is different, and like you said, especially when people are in those situations, and people always are like, well, why don't people just leave? I don't people is because obviously they are kept there by this person like you know what i mean like you're almost caged in a way not necessarily physically i mean sometimes even physically hello but um mentally you know you're just you, it's not even fathomable almost in yeah a way. yeah know, i mean so he would like case my high school classroom to make yeah. sure i wasn't talking to anyone he would like i wasn't allowed to have friends he even joined the marching band um like to help with props to make sure i wasn't talking to anyone during rehearsal it Thanks. like people mm-hmm. can and will be that manipulative to control you and everyone all the teachers thought they were like you're so lucky to be dating him is what grown adults would tell me they would yeah. be like you're he's such a good boy and i was like literally Ew. these bruises i'm covered in are from him not color guard and yeah then he would just they'd be like he's so attentive to you and i'm like yeah that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> it's manipulation and love bombing yeah. and uh deep insecurity on his part it he thankfully did slip up and people saw like one time he sorry i'm just gonna trauma dump now i guess but one time he took a tray of food um from like the breakfast oh you told me and he dumped it all over you right yeah he dumped it all over me and in front of people we were in the hallways of the school yeah so like we weren't like there but like people who knew me because they would later join guard Mm -hmm. um saw it happen and they like i remember them coming to me saying like we saw that happen to you that day and it was so sad and i was like oh i i mean I appreciate it, yeah. but yeah, it sucked. <laughs> I was like two years too late. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but... I'm like, you didn't say anything then. Why but... didn't you save me? <laughs> but that's also a situation. I mean, but he people... was also like a guy too who was well like built and stuff. Like he was pretty scary. He was really strong. 
Well, I think also in most situations too, we're trained and a lot of people are kind of trained to turn a blind eye or just not get into that. It's not their business. You know what I mean? I will forever be grateful. There was one time we were in the mall Mm -hmm. and this lady probably has no recollection of doing this, but there was one time we were in the mall and he was talking down to me um, and yelling at me and screaming at me and grabbing me. Mm. And this random lady walked up and she ripped him off of me. And then she looked at me in the face and she said, do not ever put up with that. She was like, you don't. (laughs) Sorry. She was like, you don't deserve this. And um, this is not okay. What's happening to you? And it was just this random lady. And so now Mm -hmm. I I've never been in a situation where I've witnessed like another thing happening to someone else but if i was i want to be like her because Mm -hmm. that was one of the first moments where i realized like this isn't okay what's happening well it takes someone like that to point it out to you because you're so used to it you allow it to you know you you get almost you're manipulated into thinking that it's okay and to believing that well even that I you, even it. or yeah exactly exactly that that it was always my fault like that's what she said in the movie and i was like oh damn that's yeah i'm feeling this um but yeah and so it's it's really wild what manipulation can do to a human brain and like people people like think it's so easy to get out of it until you're in it and you'll never know truly unless you've been in that situation and it's it's it feels impossible to escape and we even had a pregnancy scare too and I thought I was going to be stuck with him forever just like she had in the movie this movie like really (laughs) other than there being an invisible man this movie like really hit home for me and i was like Mm -hmm. i mean i never drugged him obviously but um it just it was really the same and it yeah it triggered it triggered a lot of emotions in me while i was watching i had to keep pausing it i finished literally right before i started at like one something Mm -hmm. and i had to keep pausing it because i was like i can't handle this right now (laughs) but we're gonna talk about it and i again i picked this movie because you gave me options (laughs) and and i was like i want to watch this and i had no clue um that this is what it was about uh i definitely was thinking of a different movie i I wonder what movie you were thinking about i think like the hollow man or something that's with kevin bacon Yeah. yeah Yeah, I think that's maybe older. that's what yeah. I was envisioning because I thought this was an older movie. Whenever I saw it was 2020, I was like, oh, um, so yeah. I thought this was an older movie. Like I'm, I thought it was from like the 90s or something. Mm-hmm. You thought it was The Hollow Man? Yeah, I think so. OK, because if you've seen that was. one, then then yeah. And that's way different storyline. Yeah. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I think that's what I was thinking of when I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's watch that. Um, but yeah, so I guess let's, uh, dive into just it, get into it now that um, we're done crying. <laughs> <laughs> the The movie opens up with, um, like it's very, the soundscape on this movie throughout the whole movie is really good. Cause of course it has to kind of pay and lay in, uh, lean into that more because, the premise and the the antagonist of the movie is invisible so you have to lean in on the sound to kind of bring in a mood um and does that opening the movie with the ocean and just kind of giving us this really rush nice rush of sound um and even before that i think we get like the clicking noises as well of the suit um yeah and and then we come and open up into the bedroom of this nice and beautiful, um, <clears throat> elegant home with all those beautiful windows. And, and the title see... card, sorry, was so dope. Oh, oh yeah. The yeah, title yeah. card was really cool. I thought it was really creative how the waves mm-hmm. crashed up and then it gave us some credits and then the title card and then Revealed. it just disappears. And I was yeah. like, 
Ooh, that's nice. I thought it was pretty cool. Plays really heavy into the title of the film. And we have uh, Cecilia laying in bed. And the beginning of the movie really does a lot with not giving us any dialogue and just really um, being able to depict a lot of emotion and <laughs> really narrate what's happening with just the movements, the her pulling up her phone after getting out of bed and like, you know, making sure that she's watching him on the camera to make sure that he's asleep. She says, you know, Adrian calls to, to see if he's sleeping well. And we see the pill bottle that she has is diazepam. So we can tell that she probably, I mean, we don't know at that point. That I meant to look pills, it up, but okay, but that's what diazepam is. There, there's, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, <clears throat> hating her, at least in this situation to put him to sleep. But it's to relieve symptoms of anxiety and alcohol withdrawal. Uh, okay. to treat certain seizure disorders and to help relax muscles so yeah it's pretty much a downer um and so they are she's planning her escape as we can tell she's being really quiet moving through the house um she is um you collecting she, a mm-hmm. bag from a secret hiding spot in her closet yeah so you can tell that everything's been kind of meticulously thought out yeah, because inside the bag, you can see, like, big ch- chunks of money, like, passport, other things, like, to get her. It's clear that she's trying to escape. Um, mm-hmm. And then she wanders into some sort of lab that I was like, oh, Whoa. what the fuck? <laughs> Dexter's laboratory. Yeah. Yeah. And she disables the alarm and all the other cameras, minus the one that's on pointed now pointed on him. Mm-hmm. Like you said that she did earlier and she pauses on her way out and looks at this empty sort of cell thing that mm-hmm. it's like a holding cell kind of thing. And it has these little arms that are outstretched, but it's holding nothing or yeah. at least you think it's looks- holding nothing. And she even kind of looks and is kind of like, huh, but then kind of, you know, goes back to doing her shit. Yeah, she's like, we don't got time to think about that right now. Yeah. Um, and she's on her way out, and then she accidentally kicks the dog bowl, which this yeah. part of the, the film is relying, yeah, heavily on her. silence. Um, mm-hmm. but she makes a big, it's a big sound that happens yeah. whenever she kicks the dog bowl, but thankfully he doesn't, um, wake, wake up. up just yet, just yet. And then she's but, able to make her way to the garage. Yes. And that's whenever we, uh, she's in the garage, she's about to escape, but then um, we get interrupted by a bark and it's the dog. Oh, was that me? That was funny. No, that I think, echoey. I think it was a, oh, I think a motorcycle went by on my end. <laughs> um, but the dog comes in and at first I'm thinking like, oh my God, he's going to attack her. But she's like, oh my gosh, it's her baby or sweetie. I don't know. I forget his name. Zeus. Um, Zeus. And then um, she's like apologizing that she can't take him with her. And then she like takes time to take the collar off because she feels bad for him, which I do get. But I was thinking like, honey, you don't have time for this. And you then also, get out like, of there. as soon as he sees that dog without the collar, like he, he's going to put it back on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's gonna Unless she it... took the collar with her, but she didn't, right? She didn't. No, she, she just drops it. Like, drops it. Yeah. So I was I may be yeah. startled because of the you know, the car alarm going off because in the process of taking the collar off, she ends up knocking, bumping into the car and it makes the car alarm go off. So now we're like, oh my gosh, we got to get going for real, for real. So she ends up uh, bolting, basically leaving the garage, running out, running like through their land and then over this fence and then ends up in like essentially a little small woodsy area running through that and then making her way all the way to a road that's on the other side. And she's waiting there for someone to come pick her up. And you can tell because she's like looking at her phone. She's like, come on, come on, come on. And she's waiting for her sister, of course. Um, And she. um, Yeah. I didn't realize at first that this, I was worried that it was going to be him approaching in the car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. And I was like, "Uh, girl, don't just willy nilly walk up to this car 
But then thankfully it is Emily, her sister. Which of and... course they build the suspense up to that because the whole like, you know, she's waiting and then like we're looking in the woods and you can kind of hear like stuff crackling. Branches and stuff. Uh-huh. breaking and stuff. It's, yeah. So it was... it's all the suspense. Um, but you're right. If when you haven't seen this movie, you're like, I've, I've literally seen this movie like this is probably my first time watching it. So that's why I'm like, I was new as the sister, but I remember, yeah, the first time it's like, damn, you're right. It, it was like, who the hell is that? It could be whoever she's running away from, but she's yeah. in the car and then she's like telling them to leave, but she's like, what the hell is going on? Like what, you know, what, is, what is happening? And no then, time for questions, sister. For real, honestly, too, because if someone's telling me to like pick them up in the middle of the night, they get in the car, they seem disheveled and they're like, drive. It's not time for her to be like, wait, what's happening? It's like you yeah, drive be like, and okay. ask questions later. That's yeah. whatever. That's like what you say. It's ask questions. Later. But anyways, um, he ends up running up on them, busting the window. And then the sister's like, oh, my gosh, OMG. Oh, and uh, she had also dropped the pill bottle, by the way, yeah, getting into the car. Yeah. yeah. And so they end up doing that. And um they drive off thankfully get get away but he's just kind of there picks up the pill bottle and is just looking at them drive off into the distance um and then we cut to a two weeks later jump two weeks later jump and we are in a house miss cecilia is debating on whether or not to go get the mail but she can't get herself to get out of the house because she is paralyzed by her anxiety and fear of um her ex-boyfriend coming to find her um because exactly. right now she's hiding out there and quote unquote nobody knows that she is there um so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and she makes it outside and gets to the mailbox successfully um but as she's about to open the mailbox ba- box we hear these heavy footsteps approaching of running someone running and of course it's someone running with a hood over their head so it's like extra terrifying um mm-hmm. but yeah she spooks and runs back inside yeah. and doesn't end up actually getting the mail um but yeah and then James not yeah James is there and he's like he's just kind of like it's well, okay it's okay we'll get to it eventually and no rush kind of thing um but then emily shows up right Mm -hmm. and she comes to the house and cecilia gets rightfully mad um i think because not knowing the situation yet she tells emily that you can't come to this house because he knows where you live and he will follow you to this hiding spot essentially and emily it's like no no it's okay it's okay he's dead that was Um, a really cool way to drop it like yeah the way she dropped it to me was just kind of like he's dead yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) Yeah. but yeah she's like he's dead and then sees like what and she's like yeah and she's like i love how she's like so you don't have to cut me out of your life anymore like, yeah and it's like girl this ain't about you right now like real, i know that, that she hasn't been able to open up about it like because yeah, it true. is it is so hard to open up about it and then yeah. also like getting people who believe you too like the first time that i i'm basically an open book at this point but like the first time that i ever wrote about any of the like abuses was for a school paper mm-hmm. um describing like a the greatest evil or something and i was like oh you want some evil i got evil for you and Mm -hmm. i wrote a paper and i showed it to one of my friends and she was like you make it sound like he raped you and i was like he He did did. and yeah that it just like people even the ones that are closest to you will not listen sometimes and it's it's terrible terrible yeah but um terrible terrible and what it is. terrible they're all gonna burn in hell whoever told yeah. you that whatever little girl that is she's gonna burn in hell and the whole <laughs> family's probably she's gonna burn doing, in hell she's doing well now so i hope oh. and i'm doing okay now so i hope that she won't but we're still probably gonna burn in hell caitlin anyways um, that's true we're a couple of 
<laughs> well, hellions. <laughs> and so then, um, he, you know, after all of that, and he's dead. Oh my gosh! And so he's kind of like, huh? Okay. Um, you can. Tell she that, shows like, her an article, and we see yeah. that he's the head of a tech company, too, yeah. with it. And I was like, oh, makes that sense because the tech the was in lab. a garage. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is coming together a little bit more now. You kind of but... have to take this film and piece it together as you're going along because they don't give you a backstory. And that no. is one of my fun facts. Um, Lee Wanell chose not to have an opening establishing Cecilia's predicament with Adrian because I wanted to just drop the audience into Cecilia's situation without any backstory and make them feel everything through her. And he said, and luckily I had Elizabeth Moss, who is very good at communicating a lot to the audience without saying anything, which she was very emotive and yeah. really good at expressing and looking and talking to nothing. Um, That's true. She, yeah, she did a great job. Her, her face is able to um, convey the terror a lot of the times, like of like, especially like when she's in the room, like, cause it's not even like super terror. It's like the, uh, it's like uncomfortableness, uncomfortable. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Very like, I uh, just always on edge, unfortunately for her. Cause that's a terrible yeah. way to live. Um, yeah. So um, after, uh, oh, and she also, you know, they're explaining to her, she's explaining to her that he's dead and she's not believing it. So there's like, there's no way, like, there's no way that he he would have done this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because he they, controlled they, every aspect of my life. There's no way he would do this. Unali- the, the title was that he unalived himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we're getting past this. And then they're asking her, like, what did he do? And she's getting to explain to them at the like, you know, the, the breakfast coffee table, um, basically, essentially, um, we don't have to get into too much detail, but like all the traumatic things that he was doing to her and why she was stuck there, um, trapped, essentially, under his control. And um, this really helps to show um, James and Emily, like, just how bad it was and uh, for them to sympathize with her and then i believe she says like he hit me they would be like well did he hit you and she would say and amongst other things like it wasn't always physical abuse but definitely a lot of mental abuse and yeah well um, it also made me think that he would do more physical abuse than just hit her yeah yeah exactly and um Then she, this is where she also admits that she took birth control without him knowing because Mm -hmm. he had wanted a baby. Baby. Little wee pappy. Um, Little, little boy or lassie. Um, And she didn't want that, obviously, because she didn't want to be trapped there with his child, Um, which she, you know, says very much so. Exactly. Which is so understandable. Yeah, because I mean, I know that you can, but if you have a child with someone and you want that child to grow up with, I oh, mean, you yeah. probably wouldn't want I mean, him no. to grow up with him in that their life, but like that really does tie you to a person. Like you could be separated from them, but you'll never, you'll never you'll be always separated be... when you share DNA with exactly you share a child. Yeah, there's always going to be that tie. And like you said, I mean, whenever people, uh, yeah. Unless you were just to, yeah, that's a lot. We'll just leave it at that. So a lot of factors coming in. And so yeah. um, then we have, um, uh, bu- 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 she gets she, little, she's going to get the mail the next day. It's the next day she's going to go get the mail, right? Exactly. And she makes it all the way to the mailbox. Um, and she comes back and triumphantly like sets the mail back down on the counter. And she's like, well, looky here, motherfuckers. Look what yeah. I did. And they're all like, what? You got the mail? And they're so <laughs> proud of her. And it's like a really great moment. But then um, James checks the mail. And unfortunately, there's a letter for her, which is a surprise because nobody should knows that she is there. Exactly. And I was like, uh oh, that's not good. Um okay. and we she opens the letter and we see that it is a notice of heirs. Um so she got something from Adrian. Adrian, yeah. And his estate because he was like a tech mongol. 
Um, and so she goes to meet with his brother, Tom, who is the lawyer of his brother's estate. Played by Oliver Jackson Cohen. Yes. And um, he basically explains to her that you're going to be getting five milli over the next four years in installments of like a hundred thousand, I think he said. Um, I don't remember the math on it, but five milli is a lot. Yeah, it was definitely she'd be getting five milli and then uh, installments of some amount and over like a month kind of thing. Um, And this was as long as she didn't get into any sort of crime like legal trouble committing any crimes Mm -hmm. yeah which is very specific exactly and like even in the moment i was like oh that's not gonna be an issue i was like she's gonna be fine (laughs) and then later on i was like oh she's not gonna be fine this is not good (laughs) yeah oh it's so sad but yes um i know and and, oh and then um we have um this brother meeting lawyer situation happening with her sister there, thankfully acting as her, um, not lawyer, but as her, um, I guess speaker or I'm not sure. Um, um, but when <laughs> we, um, had, um, then they're given gifts out at the house mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's time to gift a ladder to James and Sydney. um, and she's like, look at this nice ladder I got y'all because that one needs to go. We need to get it out of here. And um, they are so giving out ladders. And then she says, oh, but Sydney can use this ladder too. Because look at what, what is that? What is that? What's up there? And it's, it's, a, la- it's a letter that you need a ladder to get. Exactly. So Sydney climbs up the little ladder, gets it, and she says, it has my name on it, and it looks suspiciously like your handwriting. <laughs> yes, and uh, because it is, because she's like, open it, and it's very sweet of C, because she ends up gifting Miss Sydney basically her college career. She tells her, you know, uh, for the next, I don't remember the math on it, but for the next so-and-so, I'm going to be putting money into this account and I'm going to call it Parsons. And it's going to be your Parsons account for Parsons School, which is a fashion school. Exactly. Or, She's giving, I think mm-hmm. it's an art school that also art has school for her to fashion. Go to fashion. Yeah. 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 Um, 10000 a month for a certain amount of time. Mm. Um, but basically then she was like, she might even have enough to go to grad school. Um, yeah. It was, and I just wrote, they have a cute dynamic, like, especially yeah. whenever they start like pillow fighting and stuff and they're just like all having a good time together. But then it's quickly ruined by this eerie POV shot from around mm-hmm. the corner. Like someone's watching them. Like yeah. we were the ones watching and intruding on a um, intimate Conversation. situation. Moment. Yeah. Because then they and... start to celebrate because they want to break open champagne um and it's a cute moment like you said and then cecilia goes to her uh bedroom situation and she's like you know i guess she did a little shopping little retail therapy and ended up she uh, should yep buying some stuff and as she's kind of uh taking it all out of the bags and stuff we hear some like tech to like what, what would you call it clicking noises yeah like like a camera lens whenever like the open and close of a zoom lens yeah a little like whirring and yes uh is that the word well whirring is more like a like a almost like a buzzing yeah mm, in the Mm -hmm. background kind of thing Mm -hmm. yeah but um yeah, she's hearing like the shutter and stuff and clicking the sound. That's and she kind shutter. of, speaking of which, we covered that movie, didn't we? We did. What? Shutter? Shutter? No. No, we didn't. No. I just watched that movie. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't covered it. I'm you thinking of notes. what's the one with Baba Ganoush? His name's not Baba Ganoush, but Bag The Baba Duke? No. Oh, Bagul. Bagul. Yeah, sinister. sinister. 
That's what Sinister. I'm thinking of. <laughs> That's a good one. Baba Ganoush. <laughs> Baba Ganoush. Um, beef stroganoff as the bad the villain. Oh man, you know what slaps the hmm. the what is it called? Hamburger Helper beef stroganoff oh, one hamburger hopefully is really good it is good. and it the beef stroganoff one is doesn't have any meat product in it so i can get that and then put my own like fake beef in it and still eat oh, yeah. it and it's real good <sighs> shit i need to buy me some so how do they get it to taste like beef the meat the alternative seasoning? Yeah, it's like a little bit of the seasoning and the texture because it's like a beef crumble, like uh, like you yeah, crumble uh-huh. beef. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And That's interesting. It's I hope they're it's not pretty convenient. Yeah, I hope not too. I've just been eating cows for fifteen years. Just thinking. minced up cow, <laughs> just powdered cow. <laughs> um, but yes, we have all of this going on. She asks for the stroganoff. I have no, I have no idea. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but she hears the clicking sounds the and clicking freaks out. That. Yes, and or not freaks out, but she's like, got she's some harsh because breaths. she has, yeah, a feeling that she's not alone, and then and she's being watched because she most certainly is. And she then it is. cuts to it being, um, oh, breakfast time. What's the next harsh day now? cut? to breakfast in the pan Mm -hmm. which was Mm -hmm. another like almost jump scare with the sound because it was like you were so quiet and listening for the clicking sound because i didn't honestly hear the clicking sounds um Mm. but my closed captioning told me that there was clicking sounds and so i was like listening real hard and then it all of a sudden it was like (laughs) bacon sizzling and i was like (laughs) yeah cook my kind of got me yeah and uh (laughs) Um, but yeah, then she's cooking breakfast. James comes downstairs and he's like, I got no time for breakfast, but can you get Sydney out of bed kind of thing? And yep. she says, okay, yeah. She leaves the breakfast in the pan just going. And as she walks off, we see the little knifey slide little... right off the counter. Yep. And the heat goes off on the, it goes up on the stove. Exactly. And making the pan go up in flames Mm -hmm. and it goes up the bacon starts sizzling even more and then that's oh yeah well like you said it all goes up in flames and then that's whenever they run back in and we're like oh my god it's on fire and sydney helps her to put it out because she gets the fire extinguisher um cecilia was just gonna like throw water on it and she never want to do in a grease fire never no you're supposed to get flour and throw flour on it I think flour is also not a good thing to put on I'm it. I'm just kidding. I have no idea. Okay. I I'm pretty sure. That. I'm pretty Don't sure. do that, you guys. I Fire listen to my favorite to my favorite murder, which is one of my mm-hmm. other favorite podcasts. And her dad, Karen's dad, was a um, firefighter. Fire firefighter. Yeah. And she mistakenly said that you should throw flour on something and then <laughs> it's a very popular podcast so like millions of people wrote in being like do mm. not put flour on your grease fires it's I not what good it does. does it make it worse probably it just cooks it i think you're supposed to put baking soda or powder on it it's one of those oh, okay got it or a fire extinguisher mm. fire extinguisher only you guys and if you don't have that just let everything burn and leave. That's all and you can say, do. Well, we'll do better next time. Yep. <laughs> and so thankfully they just kind of like, you know, he he ha ha. Oops, silly me. And now it's the it's the nighttime now, right? We've we've cut from the whole day and now it's night. We've literally skipped an entire day. Yeah. And we're hearing some um footsteps in the dark with like my closed captioning was like rapid typing and i was like rapid typing what and then we <laughs> round the corner and i was like oh it's just her typing <laughs> Literally and typing. um and but then she stares at the open door and this is like this is where i was like was it some sort of invisibility cloak that was in the empty area that she paused staring at in the lab looking place and it was as it turns out um but she stares into the open door and then calls for James. 
And he's like, James, is that you? She wanders out into the hallway, um, which I was like, oh, girl, I don't know if we should be doing that. Um, but wanders All out right. into the hallway. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. My headphones kind of went out for a second there. Okay, oh, I got no. to reattach. There we go. Okay. I'm back. Okay. I didn't miss um, a thing. Continue. But she walks out into the hallway, and then she's slowly going through the house and turning on the lights. And... Uh oh, the fucking front door is open. Which is terrifying because obviously she just it was kind close of a moment ago. Like stops and goes outside of it, which I was like, girl, you should be more afraid right now. Yeah. Like, this is bad. If my front door is open, I'd shit a brick. Yeah, I would too. I'd be a little bit suspicious. Maybe suspicious. I'd also watch. This is why you should always have animals, you guys. Mm, watch yeah. to see if your animals are freaking out because oh, yeah. if they're freaking out you need to be freaking out something's around exactly and um but she, she goes, goes outside yeah yeah she goes outside and she, we can see that it's cold because her breath is in the air and then fucking a puff of breath comes from behind her and i was like oh terrifying nope nope yeah, nope, it nope, comes nope. out from behind her. So we're just like, oh my God, you're not alone. And even in her face, you can tell like she's like, you know, like when the air displaces around you when something gets close to you. I feel like she could tell that something was there because she kind of looks over her shoulder real fast and then turns around and looks inside the building, inside the house. But nothing's there, of course, because obviously he's invisible and she can't see him. So she's like very much still spooked, but she goes back in and, um, she ends up does she call out for james i don't know i'm talking about oh no my bad um there we go yeah that's whenever it's still nighttime and she she's back in bed and mm-hmm. she's trying to sleep and that's whenever we see that the covers are being taken off of her in uh sydney and which is one of my biggest like fears in the night um because of the conjuring films oh, yeah. remember whenever they like when she gets on pulled feet yeah yeah I get and scared of then, that like, sometimes, too. And then, like, her cover too. gets ripped off of her. Yeah, that it's fucking... I'm like, nope. I had a dream one night that I was getting, like, dragged and yeah. um, off the bed. Like, I was having a dream, like, about being in my room. and Or I was astral projecting. I don't know. But yeah. I woke up kicking my feet. Like, kicking Spooky. everything and off of me. Because I was like no andrew was like what the fuck is going on (laughs) yeah and i was like oh that was a scared dream (laughs) yeah i've had dreams like that they're very spooky they're terrifying they are they're so real you know they feel so real and so we have her um you know having these covers being taken off of her and they take them all the way off and then we see these flashes of light going off because there's someone taking pictures of her and She starts to, I guess, feel that, you know, she's a little Did I ever chillier. tell you? No. Sorry. Um, this is just going to be a personal anecdote podcast now. Yeah. Um, one time I lived in this apartment um, and my boyfriend at the time was mm-hmm. out playing Dungeons and Dragons. So I was home alone mm-hmm. and I had gone to bed and... um there was i always had this feeling that i was being watched in this apartment or like that someone else was ghost. there yeah. yeah ghost or like someone living in the attic kind of thing because mm. there was an attic area um and then so boyfriend was gone and i woke up to and like was going through my camera roll the mm-hmm. next day and in my camera roll when a time when he was not home and I was asleep, there was a picture from my bed's point of view just facing out at the door. So, like, it looked like I took the picture in bed, but it wasn't, like, one that I, like, accidentally flipped it open. Like, it was a completely, like, still version of, like, a nice, like, solid, steady photo of my bedroom just in the dark with the hall light on illuminating it and i still to this day have no idea how that picture got on my camera roll that's weird 
Unless you yeah. were sleep photographing. Yeah, I could have been sleep photographing. Sleep snapping. No, I don't know. That's weird. That's kind of spooky. That yeah, it was spooky. really spooky. Uh, or he was fucking with you. Yeah, but, no, but he said he was gone. I yeah, he was definitely gone because he like he also was like, no, I have no like he was Couldn't like I yeah, and like his friend was who was there and the same D D group as him was like, Yeah, no, he was because I asked him later. Yeah. He was like, Yeah, no, we didn't finish our like round until we were there all night. that yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. And so it wasn't him. Not the first time, not the last time we're going to talk about it. You are susceptible to beings and creatures. And That's entities. true. I do have lots of ghosties. Yeah. Well, I think it's because I think it goes along the same lines. It's like you were such an open door, <laughs> like open book. Literally, <laughs> even the ghosties, <laughs> literally, even the ghosts are like, oh, my God, it's a body. It's a soul. I'm going to try to take it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I there's I read this like creepy pasta once about this like spirit that like it was on the no sleep Reddit, uh-huh. um and it was like about this spirit that would borrow the kid's body, and each time like it would borrow the body, it would like take, take longer and, and longer in it until yeah. it eventually just pushed her spirit out altogether and then lived in her body. And then she was there watching and then became started borrowing other people's bodies. That's crazy. It kind of sounds yeah. like the opposite of the premise of Talk to Me. How the mm, ghostly mm-hmm. spirit got inside the body and then they were like, just let it dissipate and he'll get better. Um, yeah. Essentially. But it was really strong at first. Yeah. Um, Anyways. <laughs> she we're... having yeah. photographs taken of her while she sleeps. Yeah. And then she wakes up. She looks up and we have this spooky jump scare of the like basically coat rack with the coat and a hat and everything to make it look like the silhouette of someone standing there. But it's it's not. And so then she's like, oh, yeah, because Sid was into fashion. So I Mm -hmm. think it was like a fashion mannequin of sorts, like for her to be able to like sew and stuff. Yes. And um, it it was scared me. I was like, someone's at the foot of the bed. (laughs) And then um, she ends up getting out of bed to kind of you get the blankets off the ground i guess Mm -hmm. but um that's whenever we notice the chair right yeah she the chair almost looks as if someone's sitting in it and she's like uh nope so then she throws the blanket over the chair as a test and it doesn't form a body it just goes over the drapes over the chair but i was like i was holding my breath i was like oh shit we're gonna gonna be there yeah and um thankfully it wasn't and um but then she's going to pull the sheet up onto the bed and there's she's hearing the clicking sound again and then something's standing on the sheet and she can't pull the sheet anymore spooky yeah and then you see a footstep step onto the sheet and i was like oh no 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 because if i see that i'm running out the door yeah like, not like no... waiting for it to get closer to me not playing tug of war with it yeah she's literally like pulling on it and at that point if they're like after the first pull i'd be like no because obviously it's something like you're, there's supposed to be nothing there and something some force is keeping this from you yeah exactly it was it was terrifying yeah, um, and, and and the way the steps got closer to her too, and she's just standing there, not even like moving back or anything. Yeah, and eventually she like once they get close enough, she drops it, screams, and screams for James. Yeah, and she's like, James, James, come in here, and he comes in. And he's like, what the hell's going on? And Sydney's got her pepper spray, which will come into play later, and she's like, oh. and he's like, yeah. but, girl, put that down, and she's like, you bought it for me. It was cute banter, but uh, then he says the very real line of Adrian will haunt you if you let him. Don't let him. So essentially, it's already kind of building up, um, kind of painting her as like crazy, like, you know, she's losing her mind, essentially. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, the next day we have her and, and he's telling her that she needs to get some sleep because the next day she has her big interview for work. 
Um, and she, it, it is, she ends up having her interview for work the next day. Um, why do I have a note about a ruler? Mm. What's with the ruler? I have no idea what's with the ruler, but I don't know. she gets to work. She's getting interviewed and she's trying to show them like her portfolio of her, uh, because she's an architect of her previous work and there's no artwork in there for her to show. And she's very befuddled because she knows that she put it in there and she's trying to explain that she did. Um, but also at the same time, she's starting to feel a bit woozy and sick. Um, and the dude who's interviewing her is like, you know, are you okay? Like, can we help you? But before she can really do anything or, you know, explain herself, she ends up getting up and passing out. Yeah, she collapsed. And I was I really like, like the, oh, really like that's so the, embarrassing. It is. I really like how the camera like followed her down. Yeah, that was a cool shot. And then we just end up on the ground with her face to face almost. Yep. And um then we flash to the hospital. She's in the mm-hmm. hospital and they're saying, you know, we'll call you later this week to go over the blood work. Um but as of right now you look to be okay so you can go home. Um Do you remember when we watched Candyman? Yeah. A lot of right before they went to the hospital too. A lot in a lot of the shots, like in some of the other parts of the film, like of the city scapes and the landscapes. It reminds me of Candyman for some reason. I don't know if you remember like, uh, how it would show the city and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do remember but anyway, that. But um, yeah, we're, she gets discharged because it's basically, you know, there wasn't much than what they could do for her and she was feeling better. So she ends up at home. She's like getting showered and stuff. And I can only assume maybe it was, I don't know if it's the same day, if that's how fast their test results come back, but she gets a phone call from the doctor and she's alerting her to tell her that like, hey, I want to inform you that the reason that you fainted is because you had a heavy dosage or concentration of diazepam. And she's like, but what? I I don't take diazepam. And then we see the pill bottle is there on her counter in her bathroom, the same pill bottle that she drugged Adrian with. And exactly. she at this point is it's now covered super in his, what the fuck. Yeah, because it's covered in his bloody fingerprints. So mm-hmm. we know that it's for sure the same bottle that she lost the night of her escape. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then she calls up Tom and she basically tells him to stop. She's like, tell him to stop it. And James is such a good friend. James is a real one because he's like, bitch, you better sit down, shut up and listen. Like my friend has something to say. Yeah. And you better respect her. And I love Um, how throughout the conversation, though, once things start getting a bit like unhinged, she's kind of looking at her like, oh, fuck. Like, like, what did I get myself into? She she done lost her damn eye. This some white girl shit. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But. Yeah, and then she says he's not dead to Tom, and uh, she says he's figured out a way to be invisible, and he's a world leader in the field of optics, so he's not Makes dead. Sense. I just can't see him. Yeah, I love and... how they're also like giving her like I love because I, I if someone's telling me that you know I'd be like you know what you you might have a point. But at yeah. this point, they're still like, no, like she's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Her brother was like, or his oh, yeah. brother was like, he could oh, he have might... may, may have been able to do that. But I saw the body and yeah, yeah. I know he's dead. And then oh, because he's, he was like, well, what he said was that my brother was a genius. But what made him more of a genius was not that he was able to make create the invisible suit, but that he made you believe that he did even when he didn't. Yeah, his brilliance was how he got into people's minds Yeah, and uh, did exactly what you just said. And he was like, I hated him. Um, Brother says, and or that's what the brother says. And he's like, we have that in common. And he was like, I was relieved once I heard that he was dead kind of thing. Yeah. You just keep to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, But and he finishes with the line of don't let him win by bringing him back to life yeah you know going on later on into the movie and then like you find out more stuff this his brother's pretty sleazy as well of yeah course, obviously but like yeah gaslighting 
master class for both of them. Yeah, um, I love how he's, and then um, this is whenever she ends up basically um, calling her. She visits her sister after this, right? Mm-hmm. And this is where we get the nasty like interaction because then she's like trying to get help from her sister, and then her sister's like, you know what? If this is how you really feel about me, like basically like fuck off. And then she's just like, what? And she's like, the email you sent me. And then she's like, I didn't send you an email. And she's like, you need medication and you need to, you know. And then she says the, the really triggering line from earlier that you said. And then that's whenever she just shuts her out. And honestly, like, I get it. Like, if you get an email. But, like, also, too, like, especially, too, the, they obviously don't have, I guess, that great of a relationship. Yeah. Right? Because even at the beginning when she's picking her up and she's like, having to like know what's happening like you know like um or maybe that's just her her you know the character that's just barely type a which she does give but Mm -hmm. um she um yeah just slams the door on her and i thought i was like really cold i was like that's really fucking harsh like especially like when someone's going through a crisis even if like they were to send that they're obviously going through something and like you need to talk about it not like just yeah not shut shut them out. out Yeah, because yeah. they're obviously lashing out about something, like, you know, if they even sent that, you know what I mean? Exactly. Which, and, and then the, the fucked up part, she didn't even send it. <laughs> because then Yeah, she, she didn't. She, and she gets to go home, look at her computer, and see that it was sent from her email address, and, like, it's this long-ass email just basically saying, like, you know, I don't want to know you anymore. Like, I wish it was you that died instead of him, and I, I feel suffocated by you um yeah real harsh terrible things to say to someone who i mean i get it why she's upset because in her mind she's like i'm only trying to help you and take care of you and this is how you treat me you know yeah yeah but um and then then this this scene really like kind of was very heartbreaking and triggering to watch as well because like she's just there in fetal position crying on the floor yeah and sweet sydney comes to help and she's like we can have a girl's night eat some cake and just have a good time but then they're in the middle of like kind of lightening the mood and talking and all of a sudden Cindy gets slapped and like Bitch thrown slapped. clear across the room yeah um like he used a heavy hand like i think her nose was bleeding i'm pretty sure it was more than a slap he like punched her punched her or something oh yeah God. yeah and uh, she, because she, yeah, like you said, flew across the room, and then even uh, Cecilia's like, "What the heck?" She's like, "What?" And then Sydney's freaking out because she thinks Cecilia did it. Yeah, because who else would have done it? I mean, right? Yeah, the, she just got room. hit. She doesn't and, know what's going and on. And the way Sydney's face like wasn't looking at Cecilia right at that moment, it could have, yeah, she, yeah. And James comes in, and he's a papa bear. Uh, he goes to her defense really quick, and is like. Cecilia, you need to get the fuck away from my child, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna get her to a safe place. Safe place, mm-hmm. and um, and so basically they leave, and then um, she starts. C- Cecilia starts yelling at Adrian to come out, and she's like, "What are you doing, hitting little girls? Like you can come out and hit me, kind of thing." And um, she's just kind of egging him on. Yep. And then she grabs a bag of coffee and sprinkles coffee grounds all over the floor. And I'm like, ain't no way there was that much coffee in that bag. <laughs> but, <laughs> but okay. Perfectly good coffee. Yeah. And spills the grounds all over the room. So essentially she could see his footprints, I'm assuming, if he was to come near her. Yeah. Um, but he's smarter than that. Um, and so he waits at the doorway. And it's a good way of protecting herself for now as she's asking things like, why me? There's nothing left for you to take. You've already taken it all. Like, there. why? Why are you doing this to me? You could have had your pick of any woman. And yet you chose me. And we just met randomly at a party one night kind of thing. And yeah. again, it's just me. Like, why? Because he abused it. And then that's whenever we have her after having all this talk, she has this idea to grab her phone and call his cell phone. So she yep. ends up calling his cell phone and then we start to hear a buzzing from upstairs. Yeah. Um, 
which was so terrifying. She, yeah, she ends up getting and grabbing that huge ladder that she gifted James and Sydney. She goes, pulls down the attic uh, hallway thingy, opening door, and she goes up. She gets into the attic and she's just kind of like looking from afar right now because she's, you know, obviously a little spooked. But then she ends up getting in there as she's calling the phone and she finds it um, freaking just up there above her spot where she was like literally, you know, right above where she was underneath. And then uh, as she sees the phone and then opens it, she sees that there are pictures of her that were taken the same ones that we saw like from the flash from the other night and then mm-hmm. there's also the knife that was taken from the kitchen and it is in a plastic baggie um which I, as soon as i see it in the plastic bag and then she's like i'm like i'm like do not put your hands on it i'm like do not yeah. put your finger do not put your fingerprints on that and she <laughs> literally takes it out of the bag and puts her fingerprints all over it and then she ends up um at this point but, she uh, also finds all of her drawings oh, and stuff that's right. yeah, and, from the portfolio and then she's looking through the drawings when the phone vibrates again and it says surprise oh, yeah. um and so she's like starts looking around like what the fuck and goes back over to the hole that she climbed through and to the ladder yeah. and this was a really terrifying moment when she mm-hmm dips the paint paint. onto him and it pours down and there's a person there someone was definitely there yeah Yeah. and i was just like and it looked porous and stuff too and i was just like what is what the fuck is going on Um, it looked like a golf ball yeah exactly and um the figure runs off, knocking the ladder down in the process. So it takes her a hot second to get down off the ladder. And mm-hmm. she's walking around the house with the blade out. And uh, the faucet turns on and the it's sink true. she goes to investigate. And it's full of paint. So he's washed. Somehow he's washed all the paint off of himself in the small of the amount of time. Suit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, that is. And there's none of it's all over the floor in the kitchen. It's just all in the sink. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't seem yeah. too terribly realistic Unbelievable. to me. Far fetched. Same deal like again. whenever she cuts into her wrist later on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what the fuck Whoa. happened to her wrist? Like, she Whoa. was like She cut deep into that hoe. Yeah, and she was like yeah, running she, around and getting dragged needed, and stuff. She and there was quickly no quickly medical attention, yeah. Yeah. They later on when she goes to the house for dinner afterwards, she has a bandage on her wrist. Yeah. But I was like, so there's some continuity there, but like there was a major continuity continuity error with her just having no blood mm-hmm. running off of her arm and stuff during that whole fight scene with the cops. Yeah. And how she wasn't passed out from a lack of blood. I agree with you. I feel like there's a plot hole there. Um, yeah. And then that's whenever um, uh, she ends up. Where are we? Oh, yeah. 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 She, they're, they're getting into a hole. She's like, you know, basically having the knife in her hand, just waiting for something to happen. And then something does happen because he literally picks her up by the throat and just has her up in the air. And the music, like fucking the sound, Darth Vader. Yeah, everything is working really well to really build up this really heavy suspense. And then he pushes her, her against the wall and then just kind of has a go at her, just really fucking her up for the Beats most part. Beats the shit out of her, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. And they're destroying the house in the process. Like, he's, like, flipping tables and shit. And I just wrote, I hope to God James believes her when she gets home. Um, and nope. he doesn't. <laughs> Nope. But uh, she's breaking dishes on his head and shit. And she gets out after a long struggle, gets out yeah. into the street, calls an Uber thing. And um, he is not hurrying at all like she asks him to. He's just kind of like, oh, okay. And she's like, hurry, fucking well, lock the doors. <laughs> yeah, for real, right? Thankfully, she was able to get an Uber. I'm assuming it's like, I don't even know what time it is but he ends up she ends up asking him to take her to uh 
Adrian's old house or, you know, his house, um, the one that we opened up in the beginning of the movie. And he's like, you know, that's all the way outside of the city. It's going to take a while. And she's like, yep, that's OK. So they end up going. He takes her all the way there. Um, she tells him to wait for her so that we like so, you know, she can have a ride to leave. And um, she ends up going into the house. And what does she find when she goes into the house, Caitlin? Um, she goes into the house and mm -hmm. Zeus is still there. So yes. she finds Zeus. But then she goes back into the empty holding cell thing. And yeah. she um, is like, I have some suspicions about this. And um, she types in 12, 14, 17, the day we met. And she goes, how romantic. Um, but that's a code to the cell. And she gets in and she realizes there's this footage on the wall that's being projected from like seemingly nothing. Yeah. yeah. And there's some sort of camera there. And so then she messes with it some more. And we see that it's this like porous covered in tiny cameras that makes it invisible suit mm -hmm. and um Which she's also, in there how does that even work like just because it's a bunch of like how because it's a bunch of cameras is it you know what i mean yeah i don't get how that works but okay well we won't that's that's not that kind of podcast uh, yeah i'm guessing that it somehow picks up exactly what but it's like how it? to know yeah and how it projects it i don't i don't really get it i don't know yeah but and it's waterproof hell yeah somehow it works <laughs> um but yeah then zeus starts barking at something as uh -huh. she kind of rips the suit off of the little hanger thing mm -hmm. and this is where i was like girl you need to, mm -mm, we need to yeah, get need to go. out we need yeah. to get out right now and she goes and she hides in the fucking closet and she puts the suit in her secret hiding place thing. And I was like, she should have kept that suit as evidence because he probably knows about that fucking secret hiding place by now. I was about to say that, too, because she does have time to run out of there. So it's just like she got out, it's like she could have had left with that in her hand or yeah. put that shit in her fucking pants. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know done something to get it out of the house but yeah. we need it to be in the house for what happens later so i guess that's why she leaves it there yeah um but she's then in the car and she's making phone calls saying she doesn't have much time left and she's saying like i need to meet you in person kind of thing yeah at eight o'clock or whatever time it was so and then, the, I love how the Uber driver the whole time was just kind of listening to this Yeah, he's like looking well. in the rearview mirror. Like, like, damn, he's getting all the tea. He really I'm was. I'm like, what the fuck? For real. Because <laughs> the way she was speaking too, like it was just so like, like life and death, like OMG, like, yeah. And so then she ends up, uh, you know, meeting her sister at this restaurant it's very like swanky like fancy fancy i guess i don't know but yet they do dinner family style i don't know um it the the dude taylor who's trying to take care of them um obviously the sis and c are like you know not in the mood so she dismisses him and it's all really funny the interactions that they're having um mm. but yeah she, uh, the sister thankfully came and she's open to talking to Cecilia and Cecilia is basically trying to be like I've got proof and I know that like uh, this and that has happened but like you are one of the she's basically kind of compliment her she's like you're one of the strongest people I know like um, and right now I need your something your strength and Tart starts to tell her about um, what's been going on but before yeah, she, can really she begs even get her any... to believe what she's about to tell her mm -hmm. but before she can even really get any information out and the, the sis is actually like you know yeah okay like i'm listening like what's going on there's knife starts floating right next to her and she's like wait what the fuck and before they can even react or do anything the knife slits um emily's throat and just ends up in cecilia's hand 
and it happens so all fast. in a matter of so fastness that like you're even like everybody the watcher what's happened to them like even the the uh belated uh reaction from like everyone around them and even from that first lady um it is pretty gnarly and yeah she dies bleeds out right there on the table yeah really in front sad. of everyone it was sad i was like no yeah. um and then it was given that they were like their only family yeah exactly like she didn't have anyone else to anyone really else. turn to yeah and i was like watch the security footage you'll see she didn't do it and yeah. but... but even like how fast it ended up in her hand like that was so crazy I don't even know how they managed to pull that off, honestly. Yeah, me neither. Mm. Um, but they end up taking her into a tiny room, a holding cell, and they're tying her down and medicating her as she's screaming all the while. Like, I didn't do it. He did it. He's here. He's in the room with us right now. Like, it's not yeah. me. He killed her. It's and really helping her case, making her look more crazy. Exactly. And they end up locking her in there with him um because she's just looking in the corner and she's like he's here right now and they're just like okay little lady go back to sleep and (laughs) um then he says surprise and the screen fades to black um and transitioning into the questioning now what is that called an interrogation an interrogation yeah i couldn't remember the word while i was watching that i was like an interview and i was like this is not an interview (laughs) (laughs) But um, they're in the interrogation now and they're asking her about the video, the diazepam that was in her system, and then the email that was sent to her sister, like saying that she wished she had died and stuff like that. And so it's not really making her case look any better. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, I can't tell you, but he's in the room now so i can't i do have something but i can't tell you and i was like girl ooh, not helping. you look no mm-hmm. yeah it's not looking good whatsoever for her and then is this after all of this then we have the doctor meeting with her and telling her that she's pregnant yes yeah she mm-hmm. is there and she's like blood test and it turns out you're pregnant uh, must have happened sometime within the last month ish or so or month and a half ish and then that's whenever um she's kind of like you can hear like the doctor talking and it's fading and going into the background because she's kind of having this moment of freaking out understanding that she is pregnant with this man's child when she knows that she was like trying to stay on birth control and stuff and kind of go against his wishes but we find out from her meeting with adrian's brother tom i think that's the name the yeah. uh lawyer uh, brother that uh you know adrian knew that she was trying to take birth control and switched her birth control out with like basically sugar water pills um, yeah and then for a placebo effect and then that's whenever um we have him basically telling her that um because she is in the situation that she's in, she is basically forfeiting all of her money and stuff because she's technically committed a crime. She can no mm-hmm. longer access that. But because of now knowing that she is pregnant, which I think even, I, I don't know if, I, did Adrian necessarily know at that point? Or was that just confirmation for something that he thought he knew? Uh, I, I think he, he was... Ne- I think he was hoping she was pregnant, but I don't think he knew she was pregnant Pregnant at that point. I think he was in the room when the doctor told her. No, no, no. I know. He, yes, that part. But like okay. before. Like, oh, okay. You don't, you don't think he knew, did he? I don't think he no, knew. No, I, I don't think, think he, he did. I think this is what changes it at this point, because then he's like, the brother's like, well, now Adrian is saying, you know, if we just basically just, let's just put this all behind us. And if you just come home and live and have the baby, everything will go back to normal. It's fine. We everything can have a fine. new life and mm-hmm. it'll be with just one phone call. It's time to stop playing games. Um, and you can have a new life and it'll be just like your old life with him. And I was like, no, that sounds like hell. Um, just make one phone call. And then she's yeah. like. Nah. absolutely the fuck not she's like adrian killed my sister and you helped him and he's like yeah and then she throws everything off the table 
and um tom is basically says i'll come back in three days and he says we'll be watching yeah which was like confirming that everything she's been going through has been for real exactly and at this point um uh, while because she threw some of his papers and stuff on the floor she was able to steal a pin from his briefcase that he doesn't notice she does and it's she like takes. a quilly kind of pen that yeah. a fountain pen that has that sharp edge to it because when she gets back into her room she ends up going into the little shower that they have in their room area and gets her quilt pin and says what did she say like something like you'll never have this baby and you'll never have me and yeah and starts to like trigger warning yeah yeah trigger warning tries to unalive herself um but before she can get too far with it he ends up grabbing her arm and her wrist and she's like there you are gotcha and then like starts stabbing his suit so then yeah suit she's like to... fuck you yeah, and just going ham, go ham on him and i'm like she could have done like, more Woo! i think but yeah she ends up doing damage enough that his suit starts to like go in and out of optics so you can see it and then not see it and see it and see some parts but not other parts and one of the guards comes in to check on it check on hers telling her to just get in her bed but then he notices the freaking scary man sitting mm-hmm. on the floor uh but is freaking weak as heck because he literally gets taken out by his own stun gun t- taser yeah i wonder if this suit gave him like if Strength. he was able to like yeah make it stronger because he really took out or he was just incredibly strong um which is terrifying but yeah. possible um but he really took out each of these cops one by one just like with ease yeah and i guess even though he was coming in and out of invisibility when he was invisible i mean i guess it is hard to fight something you can't see right so exactly uh, yeah these poor guards kind of didn't really have a stand a chance because as she runs out and tries to get away these guards try to stop her and act like she's the villain but then they get revealed very quickly that like you know adrian's out there and he's in his invisible suit and they one by one like you said all get taken out um and it's pretty graphic it's pretty gruesome scene it's pretty cool actually to be age but he ends yeah up taking them all out and it's almost like he is as well taking joy out of it because like especially the last one he's just like bang and yeah then, uh ends up walking out and she chases after him she goes into the parking uh or actually goes into through the security people and she's just like <laughs> you know stay back yeah. yeah she gets Walks up she's out. ready to fight she's got that gun she shoots at yeah. him in the fire escape goes out in the rain after telling them to watch out and is shooting at him just like that yeah. and um this is where i was like what about her arm that she cut yeah. open like she should have like have been passed out at this point yeah and then the guards are coming for her and then they're in the rain and she's it's a really high intensity scene because she's like hiding behind different cars and he's invisible so you literally never know when he's gonna just pop out at you yeah and um he's she finally kind of of still though glitching in and out yeah so Uh she finally Uh finds him underneath the trunk of a like minivan looking thing and she goes to confront him but he gets her down and yeah he pens her up against another vehicle and he's like, I will hurt someone else that you love kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's right. And then he starts to threaten Sydney. Yeah. And she's like, no, leave her alone. She's just a girl kind of thing. And he's like, ha ha ha. I'm a villain. I do what I want. Yeah. And then that's whenever he ends up shooting some other poor guard. Which yeah. I'm just like, God damn, these guards are just like going through it. And then I love how, like, the guard got shot by this dude in an invisible suit, but then sees her walk up, and he's, like, telling her to, like, don't do anything crazy. And I was like, bro, didn't you see what happened? Like, what? Like, like th- that wasn't even Crazy me. is not a thing we should even be mentioning right now. Like, what's crazy is that there's an invisible man out here. Literally. But, yeah, so, um, they... So, uh, 
she ends up get she ends up calling James because she ends up you know getting able to get a vehicle calls James and is like hey um you need to go home yeah she right steals now. a fucking car yeah yeah oh yeah from the dude that <laughs> because I forgot he tried to run her over and then she yeah, steals tried the to car from the dude that got hit yeah. Uh, or who like swerved out the way and then she takes that poor dude and then she's calling James and she's like hey you need to go home because Sydney's in trouble she's in danger yep and uh fucking shit Adrian gets to the house first and he goes into Sydney's room she wakes with the start and grabs her pepper spray she's like immediately on the alert and thank god goodness she sprays the pepper spray into the air and he falls down and she realizes that someone's in the room with her and she runs um but barely makes it out the door before he is able to grab her by the neck and start choking her but then thankfully james gets home right in the nick of time see now here's the thing do you think that two invisible men were in the house right now oh possibly not just one yeah mm, i because I, I think that's because i think that because she maced him right how did was he able to get from the macing in the bedroom to all the way over there where he like knocks her out in the hallway and yeah and that's all like and he basically gets her from like the other side of the hallway yeah i, I think they were both in there i think yeah Tom and what's his face were in there at the same time and then he and then Adrian point, escapes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then because because Tom ends up um, getting shot. Comes up, comes and concocts that whole plan of like whatever. Yeah, I don't know, but um, because yeah, that, I would like, think that they're both mm-hmm. in there, and also with how much they beat James up too. Like yeah. if because James got the shit beat out of him. Mm-hmm. Two, I could see two people like possibly ganging up on him at the same time there as like well. One of them holding him down, like that. yeah, and, and the other one just is... going ham. Yeah, um, and so uh, yeah, because James comes in and is able to try to help her, um, but is getting attacked and brutally um by uh the Invisible Man. Uh, but thankfully Cecilia comes in and she has the fire extinguisher right yep yeah and then fire extinguisher saves the day again she's like sydney get down uh uh-huh to um wait does she or does she she does yeah she sprays him and it makes him visible for a bit so then that's how we get the shots in yeah that's how she shoots him and he falls down and um then She's able so, to walk up to them, and he's like, you know, obviously beating out, and they take the mask off, and it's Tom. Exactly. And so then you're like, well, shit, they were both in on it now for sure. Um, but it was Tom in this one. And then they later go on to say, we kind of flash to them in the like police headquarters or something, and James is kind of giving uh, Cecilia a rundown. And he's basically like, we found Adrian in the basement of his house tied up. And she's like, no, you don't understand. He set his own brother up. And she's like, that's what he does is he makes me feel like I'm the crazy one. And she's like, he will always make it look like it was someone else. Like it was their fault and not his. Mm -hmm. That's the narcissist for you. Exactly. And um, then she says, as long as Adrian's around, you can't help me. And so then she ends up calling him. Yep. And she's like, we, baby, I miss you. I love you. Yep. No, she's like, we just hear him say, Cecilia, I'm glad you <clears throat> called. And then yeah. we see her going back to his place. Um, And he's like, wow, you look amazing. And he's all nervous in front of her and stuff. And um, she's like, I don't feel amazing. This is all a lie kind Mm -hmm. of thing. And then she's already serving it up with like, -uh, don't feed me none of your bullshit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, And they they go in in for dinner. dinner. Yeah, they start to have a little dinner, a little chatty chat. And she's like, you know what? 
I'm willing to kind of like play along with this for one quick second. You know what? I'll entertain coming back, but you need to admit that it was you, that you did everything, that everything was you and I'm not crazy. And like you did, you made up this whole entire fucking shit. You fucking killed my sister. Mm-hmm. Um, And then, and, and, and she, he literally is just like, I didn't do that. Like I, I could, I, he's I, playing I didn't. the victim and yeah, is saying Tom so. controlled like, him. Yeah, exactly. And then she's just kind of laugh crying at this point, because at this point she's just like, I think at this point she's fed up, right? And she's kind of like, yeah, Man, this, like what? She's like, he like... believes his own delusions. Like he's so <clears throat> into it that Probably, he believes yeah. that he w- had nothing to do with it. And um, he then goes down to like he goes over to her. He he touches her leg and says a sentence that ends in the word. I wouldn't surprise. want to like surprise, or that would come as a big surprise and it was like oh nope he said it again and he's such a narcissist that even though he's saying no i didn't do any of this he still is saying that just so that way she knows like no i did it you know yeah it's his little way of admitting but no one else would ever understand Mm -hmm. yeah and controlling her and stuff and yeah and i think and especially that's the moment that just sends her off into the like kill mode because she's just like you know what i need to go use the restroom Excuse me. And you go clean myself up. She and leaves. we yeah. see him sitting there in the chair. And then out of nowhere, just his hands get picked up and we get the knife that's in his hand and she he slits his own throat. And then she ends up coming out as he's bleeding out on the floor and she lets out her world class actress scream and is making sure that she is can be seen by the cameras screaming right now at this point, um, and acting startled. And then she ends up calling the police and saying that he um, has unalived himself. And James is in the car, like, listening. So he's like, oh, my gosh. So he gets out of the car and, like, runs trying to get to the place. And, um, yeah, she makes it seem like he killed himself. But then she's talking to him uh, when she gets off of the phone with the police. Um, And she gets to have this very... um, what's the word satisfying i don't know satisfying like, yeah full circle moment uh, because what does she get to say to him caitlin she says surprise surprise as he just surprise surprise dies and the last surprise, light leaves his eyes and mr james gets to the house as she's walking out she's like uh he's like i thought you were gonna you know, just try to get his confession or something like that and she was like i i was genuinely like yeah he was like you never came here for a confession right and she was like no i genuinely wanted to and then he's a fucking real homie because she was like well what did it sound like to you and he was like uh and she's like it sounded like he killed himself and he was like yeah it sounded like he killed himself Mm -hmm. and i was like oh and then she walks off triumphantly with this like kind of swelling impending almost music though that Mm. and she takes a big deep breath in and then we go to black and that is 2020's the invisible man suki's here hi suki you see me she wants lots of little forehead kisses though she will not perform yeah she won't she normally not on camera because normally i'll tell her say meow and she'll say meow you're stepping on the computer which is very bad she said it's you're taking too long it's time to give her attention um so yeah you guys that was our movie for this week that was the invisible man i'm sorry if that was triggering for some of you guys uh and um you know if y'all are listening um i just want to say i appreciate your vulnerability caitlin and for Mm -hmm. sharing that with everybody and for 
allowing everybody to know you a little bit more and um, for sharing the hotline as well. And for, um, yeah, just kind of putting that awareness out there that if you're going through something, um, you know, reach out and don't feel like you are alone and don't isolate yourself because that is what your, um, you know, abuser wants to make you feel like you're isolated and alone and that you are stuck, but you are not. And yeah, I hope that exactly. if anybody's going through that, that they can find the light and find a way to get themselves through that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do you have any other fun facts to add for this? Oh, fun facts. Mm -hmm. Suki. She keeps climbing up here. Lee Wanel, Wanel had told cinematographer Stephen, Stefan Ducio, um, I'm not sure if that's how you say his last name, that this horror movie would feature plenty of light as an invisible man doesn't need to hide in the darkness. And he kind of groaned with pain because cinematographers love darkness. The attic scene is a little gift that he gave to Ducio, and they lit it with just the torch. That's so he, cute. <laughs> um. And then as a fan of opening title sequences, Lee wanted this film to feature titles that are simple yet still speak volumes about the film itself. And the one here, Waves Crashing Against the Rocks, briefly showing the titles before they drip away, came to him on set. As, and he soon discovered that water is the most difficult thing to get rid of, get right with CG. And, I bet, because there's so many intricate details to water. But yeah, is, exactly. So fluid, yeah. Yeah. Um, Wanel and his crew wanted a, used a combination of old school techniques and the state of the art CGI wizardry to bring the invisible man to life with some scenes requiring a fully green suited actor that could be oops, Suki, no get off that could be painted out later and others achieved with nothing more than a simple bit of string well uh what is this sorry she's like crawling everywhere she is. um she almost closed the whole screen right now um that says well with say the fight scenes that was a real mixture of things Wanel said we had lizzie being pulled around in wires and we had a stunt person in a green suit who then had to be removed digitally but then also in those scenes we would also use a really old school practical effects like pulling doors closed with a piece of string some prop guys would be hidden in a cabinet and he would pull the piece of string and a door would close or a cabinet would open it made you realize that how you do a visual effect doesn't matter it's only the end result that matters so they mm -hmm. use some old school things on this film yeah and then lastly pine trees aren't native to australia which is where the movie was filmed so the sequence where cecilia runs into the night amid amidst the pine trees was actually shot at a plantation where they are grown for furniture and christmas trees if the sun was up you would see that these pine trees are planted in a really neat rose not natural at all mm, that makes sense um but a good thing you can guess it's at night so you don't really get to see that at all it just exactly yeah um she's yeah. purring oh cute baby she's just a little baby <laughs> But, um, How many yeah, booze would you give this film? I would give it um in terms of like a film, I would give it man, you know, I maybe a four. Yeah. I think a four, because I think overall is a really great film. I think that it told the story really well um without especially i guess because of lee winnell's choices and the way that he didn't give us an opening situation i like how yeah we were just kind of plucked and then put into her life at a specific moment in time which is kind of very realistic because if we were to just have a, a movie put on anybody's life at any point in time that's just kind of how it would look you would have to put together pieces of it and that's kind of what happens when you meet anybody you know unless they're like you and me who are just open books and will just tell you everything about their whole lives. The first moment they meet you essentially. Um, yeah. <laughs> literally trauma dump. Um, trauma you, dump. It's my favorite thing to do. You, 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 you just figure that stuff out steadily. You know what I mean? You peel back the layers. Um, and so this movie definitely had some layers to it. I think uh, Miss Cecilia Elizabeth Moss, obviously her performance is really good. 
um, she was able to sell um, the uncomfortableness, the fear, the kind of like gaslit craziness like you know what i mean that like whenever she's like getting sedated and isn't getting put into the mental psych area whatever and she's like i see you like i know it was you like you killed her like it's really good and like you know it's obviously showing the depths of what she can take a character to um and then like her also moments of like whenever she gets to be like i see you gotcha and she stabs him with his his the, and the suit and stuff like it's pretty cool the spectrum she takes that character on and i think everybody else did really good too i actually really liked her sister too like her character sis her sister's character mm -hmm. i thought she was pretty like interesting for being a side character like i think and even their other character too is like sydney you fell in love with her because she was just sweetie and she was just like you know she was kind of like she reminded me of jazz you know what yeah I mean? and then we had like that kid that's just like who's who's older far beyond their years but they're still a kid you know what i mean and mm -hmm. then like james is really cool because he really was a great friend and really helped to like give like there it could have really easily leaned into him being the muscle of the film and like gave him more parts and like protecting her or something but it didn't it really just lent it all just like to her going through this whole situation almost alone even though she had the support system around her yeah and then we have um, the special effects, which I thought were really cool. I thought the sound was really good throughout the whole film. I thought the camera work, like some of the, like whenever she fell over and the camera followed her down. And then like, I liked all the in-between trends. I thought it had, this film had really good transitions um, in between um, stuff. Yeah, I liked and, a lot of the transitions as well. And... Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was pretty unique. I thought the whole, like, he's a tech genius and then, like, he made an invisible suit, but, like, half the cameras. Like, I thought that was, all. I mean, honestly, it's so far, I don't know. I don't get it whatsoever, but it's pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, I'd give it four. I think it was a solid movie. Like, I, I couldn't, I can't really tell you, like, this movie was bad because of this. You know what I mean? Like, I, mm -hmm. there wasn't too many bad qualms for me on it. So a four. Solid four for me. Yeah. Um despite your um triggering and all the trauma yeah i think i think i still really enjoyed the movie i thought it was really well done um i think that all the acting was superb and all the the idea i know it came from hg wells but the idea alone is just so intriguing and um yeah. it really captures you and makes you want to keep watching to figure out how it's going to end and it was yeah it had some triggering moments for me um but i still think it was overall a really great film that you know if you've not had any issues like that you might enjoy it um and then you might find it triggering if you had but um it was still really really a nice film to watch like i thought it was really well done and i don't know if i would watch it again personally don't um do it. yeah but <laughs> i enough. i think it's still worth the watch if you can and feel comfortable watching it um but it was yeah i think i would have to give it probably like a four as well um i don't know i was thinking 3.75 just because of <laughs> just because of how it made me react yeah um but that's not the movie's fault that's someone else's history's fault, fault. Yeah. yeah and so it's not it's not the movie's fault at all so i don't want to like you know penalize yeah. it for that um, so I think, yeah, I think I would give it a four as well. It's really, it's a really well-rounded film. I loved the use of silence and then the use of everyday sounds in order to kind of create jump scares and moments. 
Um, and then the soundtrack itself never took away from the film. It only built and added to it. I thought it was really good. And uh, yeah, just the idea alone. I I would be interested in reading H.G. Wells, The Invisible Man, just to like see how it stacks up. And just knowing that that is a book from like 1897 or whatever, like, yeah, and how, how they were able to modernize it. Yeah, modernize it. And I wonder like how it was like in the actual original book. I, I'm oh, curious. Yeah. We'll but yeah, I that. think I think a four from me. Two. So it's as solid well. four, four. Solid four for 2020's The Invisible Man. Four by four and around and around and around we go. And a four by four. That reminds me of that Miley Cyrus song. You know what I'm talking about? Um, four by four and a four by four. I don't know. Anyways, but yes, for the Invisible Man. And um, yeah, it is uh, it's a pretty heavy one. But uh, that is going along with our sci-fi horror movie month that we've got going on, which we will continue on next week. And we will be covering... Twister. Twister. Everybody, Twister. Because one of the other having... things that scare me the most. <laughs> yeah, we only know very traumatizing. We've been having a lot of storms and bad weather in our area. Um, I don't know about any of our listeners, but there's been some tornadoes and stuff. So we would like to cover Twister because although it's not like necessarily like horror horror, that is a horror for someone and somebody because tornadoes are very terrifying. And if you're ever caught or near one there's not really much that you can do um that's and nice you are at the mercy of nature yeah so that's terrifying yeah it is very terrifying so yeah look forward to next week and let us know your thoughts if you think twister deserves to be called a horror film um mm -hmm. i told andrew that we were covering it and he goes fucking finally <laughs> <laughs> he was like Aww. about time and i was like I know, I know. I was like, we've talked about doing it for a while now. And I think publicly we've talked about it, like on here yeah. as well. Um, but yeah. It's a true Texas horror story. It is. So look forward to that. And as always, we're being hosted by the lovely Rogue Media Network Studios. They take really great care of us. And you can listen to us and all the other great podcasts on this network all in one central place. And that is rogemeandnetwork.com and if you want to listen to us or any of those other podcasts you can do so in lots of places but the biggest two places would be Spotify and also Apple but wherever you do listen don't forget to rate, review, like, and subscribe that's right because that is the only way we can get ahead in this world and word of mouth tell your friends tell your dog if you want, if to... you want to let us know your thoughts on Twister then you mm -hmm. can reach out to us on our one or your thoughts on just uh, the invisible man. And <laughs> or if you need it, therapy, yeah, if you need out. therapy after this, like I do, um, <laughs> we'll all go to therapy together, but you can let us know on our one central social media platform, which is Instagram. And that is at, at boo babes podcast. And that's at B O O B A E S because we're your boo babes, not your boo babes. And that's right. And until next time, you guys, we'll see you and hopefully we won't encounter any more real life twisters. I was about to say, yeah, hopefully before, we're still here. Yeah, before we covered Twister. Um, so, yeah, until next time, you guys. Bye, Bays. Bye, Bays. been a Rogue Media Network production.
Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.